Oh no. What's up? I'm Trent Windsor and we're here in search of the perfect shuffle. It's time for another segment of Clearing Out the Archives where I shuffle my music and whichever album pops up, that's the album I review song by song. If a song is more than 50% skippable, if I would skip it more than half the time, I say get rid of it, not worth your time. If I would skip it less than half the time, if I would listen to it more than half the time, if it is less than 50% skippable, synonyms. Then I say add it to your playlist. It's a great addition to your perfect shuffle. Last time we shuffled our music and the album that popped up is the Wide Album by Weezer. Weezer is a band that almost everyone can get behind. But Weezer has also had kind of a rocky history. They started out with two amazing, very critically acclaimed albums, and then the rest have kind of been a uh, split decision. You know, very polarizing. Their fan base seems to be pretty split too. You have the fans that are really just there for the first two albums and then they think that the rest of the stuff is not good. There's also the fans who are with them for every album and don't think Weezer can fail. This is such a well-known phenomenon that even Saturday Night Live had Matt Damon and Leslie Jones arguing over which Weezer era was the best. Look, can we all just agree that Weezer is the best band of all time? No. Yes! The Wyatt album was released in 2016, which definitely falls into the category of later era Weezer. Is this one for the history books or is it one to just forget? Let's find out as I review it song by song. The first song, in this album is called California Kids. This one to me feels kind of like waking up on the beach and then getting up and going out and going surfing. Definitely serves as a very good intro to the album. In my opinion, California Kids is everything you could really want from a Weezer song. You have these amazing quirky vocals from Rivers. You have this really catchy, very melodic, and often very chunky guitar. Weezer is known to rock, man. And then you've got this skilled driving rhythm section that just pushes everything along. So you put all these things together and you just get a really well-crafted song. Really listenable and super fun. I feel like the song is happy, it's hopeful, but it's also headbanging. So I would say this one is 25% skippable. Song number two is called Wind In Our Sail. It's more classic, light-hearted Weezer fare, the more fun and carefree side of the band. Sometimes in the name of fun, these songs get a little bit corny and Wind In Our Sails, I feel there's a few slightly corny moments, but still very enjoyable song, very fun. I'd say this one is 30% skippable. Okay, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The next song is called Thank God For Girls. Uh, amen. If it weren't for girls, I would not have been born. Specifically one woman. This one's got a lot more gritty feel to it. Rivers delivers his part in sort of a rapid fire style, but it's not a rap. I wouldn't say it's a rap. It's just kind of a beat poetry. You ever been to a poetry slam? <laughs> Those things are crazy. This song is so catchy. It's really catchy. The lyrics in this one are absolutely hilarious. The song starts out talking about a girl in a pastry shop making a cannoli so that you can take it on a hiking trip with your bros. Taking a cannoli on a hiking trip is probably the most Italian thing I could ever think of. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. The lyrics work their way all the way down to the end where we start at the very beginning of Girls. God takes a rib from Adam, he crushes it up and mixes it up in a centrifuge, puts it in the microwave on popcorn setting. My favorite part is where they talk about how Adam says that really hurts, but eventually he's thanking God for girls as well. So all in all, this song, I would say 15% skippable. Song number four is called Girl We Got A Good Thing. This actually sounds to me kind of like an homage to some of the worst music of the British invasion. There's people like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones that are very well known for the British invasion because their music lasted. But there's also groups from the British invasion like uh, Jerry and the Pacemakers that I'll just put out stuff that was very generic and pretty corny. Weezer seems to fall into the same trap of being pretty corny on this one. So I would say this one is 55% skippable. Song number five is called, Do You Wanna Get High? This is a song about times when Rivers and his girlfriend from 2001 would do drugs together. This one's a very, very gritty song, but it's pretty catchy and very dynamic. 
kind of a slower song in general, but it's got these really cool slow guitar solos, and when they do kick it up, the bass really hits hard. So I would say this one is 35% skippable. Song number six is called King of the World. This is a very cute song about his wife and how if he was the king of the world, he would prevent her from crying unless she wanted to. And I think that's very considerate because sometimes you just want to cry. Speaking of crying, thank you so much for 50 subscribers. We're up to 51. I don't expect to become famous, but I'm glad that at least 50 people enjoy what I'm making and are willing to keep coming back. Back to King of the World. This is a song that has all the charm of Buddy Holly and all of the euphoria of Surf Wax America. I love how all of the parts of this song fit together so well. You can really tell that this band has been rocking and rolling together for 20 plus years. It's a really amazing thing and it sounds incredible. They really just... Is that clear? They really just... If you don't know what that means, Google it. This is another one that I would say is 15% skippable. Song number seven is called Summer Elaine and Drunk Dory. If you've seen Finding Nemo, you know that Dory was drunk all the time. Hi, I'm Dory. Hi, Hi Dory. Dory. And Summer Elaine, need I say more? Rivers himself said he doesn't even know what this song is about. He kind of just threw down some lyrics. He's trying to surprise himself which is uh, an interesting tactic. Now some of the key changes are a little bit confusing, uh, kind of throw you off from where you think the song's gonna go to where it actually goes, which I think that surprise is actually pretty nice and keeps music interesting. Unfortunately, it's just a little bit less catchy than the other songs, so I would say this one is 45% skippable. Song number eight is called LA Girls. This kind of feels like Weezer's take on something that a band would play at like a 50s prom. If you thought the last song had confusing lyrics, this one has really confusing lyrics. Uh, very strange, but it keeps the song intriguing. You know, if it was all straightforward, I love you, I miss you, I don't love you anymore, blah, blah, blah. You get bored of it. Weezer throws in some curveballs, makes it interesting. So this one is 40% skippable. Song number nine is called Jacked Up. It's basically the story of a man who is unlucky in love. This song is in more of a minor key, kind of in sync with some of the more grittier songs on this album. There's a lot more focus on piano in this one. It's still rock, it's still gritty, but the piano really lays down the chord progression and it's the foundation for the whole song. Because of that piano, to me, it feels kind of like a gritty black and white cartoon, but with a Weezer twist. And I love that. I think it's a really cool vibe, really cool feeling and it really sets this song apart from the rest of the album. I would say this song is 30% skippable. And the very last song is called Endless Bummer. This song is a really great ending to an album. It kind of sounds like the ending credit song. It's a cute ballad, but it's about rejection. I'm feeling some Beach Boys influences, maybe like extreme more than words kind of falls in that category. Maybe like a mixture of those two. It's a cool song, it's acoustic, it's soulful, and it's still quirky. It's still got that Weezer personality that persists through this entire album. That's best displayed as this song comes to an end. It really closes out with a bang. The energy is still there. I would say this one is 35% skippable. Mathematically, adding everything up, this album, as a whole, is 33% skippable. Weezer fans of all walks and of all types should be able to come together and enjoy this album. You have songs that sound like they belong to the very early era of Weezer. Songs like King of the World that really hit you with that nostalgia and really bring back that Weezer sound that original Weezer fans know and love. You got songs that sound like they belong more on like the Red Album or Ratitude, songs like Thank God for Girls that are a little bit more modern, a little bit more cheeky and still so well crafted. And then you have songs that sound like something totally different altogether that show that Weezer is moving forward in a creative way. Songs like Jacked Up that really paint a different picture and show a different side of the band. I don't know what more you could ask for from a Weezer album. This is definitely one of my new favorites from the band. Let's shuffle our music and see which album I'll be reviewing next. All right, we're just gonna go into our music library here. Go on over to albums and hit shuffle. All right, looks like the next album I'll be reviewing is Care For Me by Saba. If you like what I'm doing here, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and 
turn on the notifications. Leave a comment below, let me know what you think about Weezer. Which era of Weezer is your favorite? Which era of Weezer do you not like? And what do you think about this album? Also, let me know if you want me to review a specific album and I'll see what I can do. If you want to hear what I'm listening to right now, you can go to the link below to the New Editions July playlist, which has all of the new music from July that I really enjoyed. Or you can go listen to my radio station at the Station Head app. My station is playing 24 seven. It's at Shuffle Perfect. I'm Trent Windsor, and this is The Perfect Shuffle. It just doesn't seem like a great hiking snack, man. Like, uh... Bring a granola bar. Cannoli is going to give you cramps on the way down, probably. <laughs>